The book of Acts chapter 27, I know this is familiar verses of Scripture and about Paul and the storm and all the things that's involved. I've heard it preached so many different ways. I sat at the house about midnight the other night and just thinking about some stuff and got on these verses and the uh, Lord gave me a little thought here and I'll give it to you tonight. Hope it'll be a help and a blessing to you. I'm just going to read, uh, skip around, read some verses. And of course, you know, in the first uh, few verses of Scripture, they're, they're getting on the ship and uh, fixing the sail. Paul's a prisoner. There's others prisoners on there. They're fixing the sail, and Paul's headed to Rome. Looks like he's not going to get there, but he's going to get there because God said he's going to go there. And, uh, and of course, if you read verse number 9, it says, Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the face was now already passed, Paul admonished them, and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage <coughs> will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the land of the ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. And because the haven was not demolished to winter in, the more part of eyes to depart thence also, if by means that they might obtain to Phoenix and there to winter, which is a haven of Crete and life toward uh, the south, uh, west, and northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, Suppose they had obtained their purpose, loose and tense, they, uh, they sailed close by Crete. And you know the rest of the story. The next verse, the storm comes. And from that, that point on, it's nothing but trouble. It's just uh, storms and ships are raging and tossing to and fro and everything. And of course, we know it all comes out right. I was thinking when they were singing that song, never thought about this, Brother Doug, but right in the middle of these verses, guess what? Jesus, there comes Jesus. There's 44 verses. In verse 22 and 23, Jesus shows up. He said, Paul said, there stood by me a man. Amen. Aren't you glad in the midst of all your stuff, Jesus is always there. The Bible said he's a very present help in the time of need. I just want to say, uh, I'm going to talk about trouble tonight. Trouble. Out of text, I guess that's what it would be. Just trouble. All the way through this chapter, there's nothing but trouble. It starts out with trouble. and All the way through it is trouble. And uh, it ends up in trouble. And even going into the next chapter, there's trouble uh, when Paul has that uh, serpent lays upon him. And I got to thinking about that just trouble. You know, every one of us probably know what trouble is. Right. Every one of us has been through some kind of trouble, may be in trouble, or we may fix to be head to trouble. But every one of us has faced some kind of troubles that goes on in our lives. And uh, I was thinking, I looked the word up, trouble. It just means to disturb or agitate or... Uh, to cause mental agitation or to worry or uh, to harass. It means to cause painful discomfort, uh, not just physical hurt, but I'm talking about things we go to. Sometimes we, we have troubles financially. Sometimes we have trouble physically and spiritually and uh, mentally and all kinds of trouble. Family-wise, sometimes we have trouble. Work lives. I mean, every aspect of life seems like there's trouble comes in our life. And I thought about all that. And, you know, uh, there's a lot of statements that, that they have, and I wrote a few down. You ever heard the statement? That he said, he's just asking for trouble. Amen. Sometimes you look at people's life and the way they're acting and the way they're going, and you just look at them, Brother Brighton, and say, well, they're just asking for trouble. If they keep on going, they're going to be in trouble. And then I thought about sometimes I say, uh, sometimes, you know, we just bring trouble on ourselves, don't we? Amen. And uh, he's headed for trouble, or they are in trouble, or uh, she ain't nothing but trouble or he ain't nothing but trouble they're looking for trouble I knew we have that statement sometimes especially when we see other people have problems we'll say I know I know this is going to get in trouble and so we all have troubles in our lives and every one of us could stand tonight and testify about troubles and problems I could stand and tell you problems I've had uh, in my life and things that we face passion or trouble brother Doug uh, you have trouble said one guy here a while back he said boy I'd like to have that church and that's a really a good church. Uh, I said, it wouldn't be if you had it. Amen. Uh, I said, because you ain't never pastored and God had to train you so he'd have to put a lot of troubles. Amen. But there's troubles even in pastoring the church, living for God. Sometimes we think, you know, living for God uh, all your troubles is gone. Sometimes preachers on television, you know, they tell you that. Once you get saved, everything's over with. I'll tell you, when you get saved, you're just asking for trouble. Amen. Because trouble's going to come because the flesh and the spirit is going to work against each other. And and uh, then I thought, about, I thought about the coming of troubles in our life. Job, I believe it was, said just born a few days and 
full of trouble. Uh, Job said over in uh, chapter number three, I think I got it marked, he talked about, my friend, that he was in safety. Listen, he talks about being in safety and yet trouble come. Uh, he said, but you know, Job was doing right. Job was doing good. And my friend, he loved God. He hated evil and all those things. And, but yet uh, trouble come. Probably more trouble in Job's life than any of us has ever experienced. Uh, I'd hate to have to go through what Job went through. Uh, uh, the troubles and the problems he went through. Not only did he lose his possessions, uh, he lost his health, his, and he, he had uh, bad friends, uh, and my friend, with all the things that went on, troubles came in his heart and his life. And if you'll have it, even Jesus had troubles. Amen? Jesus was perfect, I know that, but he had troubles. He had trouble religion. Uh, he had trouble all kinds of things that, uh, that he faced. And so, every one of us has troubles that goes on, even sometimes uh, we bring troubles on ourselves. Even sometimes others uh, bring troubles in our lives. Uh, sometimes our kids bring troubles in our lives. Amen. Sometimes parents bring trouble in the kids' lives. Uh, and, but sometimes God uh, allows troubles to come in our heart and in our life. Uh, he puts say, He said He wouldn't put more on us we could bear. That means He will put things on us. Uh, he allow us to go through things that we may learn, uh, my friend, from the hardships and difficulties that we go through. Uh, and so every one of us, uh, we all face trouble. Uh, and I got two thoughts I'm going to give you, uh, two main thoughts. Uh, first of all, I'll talk about how to get in a heap of trouble. <laughs> How that you could get in a heap of trouble. This, this, these, these boys on this ship, they got in a heap of trouble. Amen. And, and so I thought, first of all, I thought I wrote this down, so I'll just have to look at it. Uh, I hadn't had time to memorize it. I tried to memorize my outlines, but ain't had time to do this one. But first of all, I thought the first way to get in a heap of trouble is ignore the warning. Ignore the warning. Look at verse number 10. Paul said, Sirs, I perceive this voyage will be with hurt and of much damage, not only to the land of the ship, but also our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which are spoken by Paul. Paul warned them, don't sail. I, I, I perceive it's going to be with much harm. Uh, if we sail, we're going to have trouble. Uh, if we sail, there's going to be problems. Uh, and my friend, listen, the Bible said they ignored the warning. Uh, and guess what? Trouble come. Just three or four verses later, my friend, trouble come and the storms come in their life. They, they looked. At, you know, I thought about Paul, the man of God. The man of God. He's, uh, he, he knows God. He, he's been saved right now. He's, he's facing trouble and he's facing death. And my friend, he is the man of God. He's the one that wrote these epistles we have. He's the one that started these churches that we have. But yet Paul stood there as a man of God and warned these people People, do not sell. But guess what? They, they just ignored the warning. I'm going to tell you what, my friend, if you want to heap, get in a heap of trouble, just ignore the preaching of the man of God. Amen? This is more than just Brother Doug. This is more, my friend, than just the pastor, the preacher. This is your pastor that God has put here. And whoever he put here, my friend, he's here. My friend is a spokesman to warn you uh, and, my friend, to show you and guide you. Uh, and sometimes I've seen people just ignore the warning of the preaching of the Word of God. Uh, and, my friend, guess what? Most of them they get in trouble. Amen. They're going to get in trouble eh, when you ignore and make fun and it will not heed the warning of the will of God and the preaching of the word of God. Not only about, I thought about the warning, not only of the man of God, but the warning of parents. Sometimes that'll get you in a heap of trouble. Amen. That's right. The Bible talks about over the book of Ephesians that, that we're to obey our parents, uh, honor our parents. Uh, and my friend, listen, and guess what? The Bible said if you don't honor your parents, you'll live long. Amen. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Uh, you know, there's a lot of young folks today get in trouble because they won't heed the warning of God's man, they don't heed the warning of their parents. You know, they look like, they look at us sometimes, I don't know if your kids ever done that, your kids ever look like look at you like you don't know nothing. <laughs> uh, we're in a whole different world. No, we done been there. 
Amen. We done been through all that stuff and, and we know some things that we ain't dummies. Amen. Say amen, Brother Brian. Amen. We're not dummies. We know a little bit of stuff. But sometimes I've seen kids just willfully, willfully, the parents would warn them, don't get with that crowd. Don't go in that direction. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't try this. Stay in church. Stay with God. And they willingly ignore the warning and they find themselves in trouble, uh, deep trouble sometimes, uh, more trouble than they could even have. It comes by because we fail to heed the warning from God's men and the warning from our parents and from. And now let me just say this: sometimes, sometimes our kids get in trouble because parents fail to warn them. Amen. They fail to warn them. Amen. And sometimes, uh, sometimes parents can't warn them because they're doing what they're trying to warn them against. Amen. Come on now, help me out. Huh? Uh, and so uh, sometimes it's hard. Uh, but you know what, kids? I I, I got boys. Uh, I know how it was. I got granddaughters. Uh, and my friend, listen, I've seen them. Uh, he tried to tell them and try to help them uh, and try to warn them this is going to happen. Uh, and my friend, listen, they just pay no attention. Uh, everybody's doing it. No, it ain't going to happen to me. And my friend, the next thing you know, they're in trouble because they didn't heed the warning. I thought about my friend. I thought about the testimony of others. Ought to, ought to, uh, my friend uh, warned us a lot of things. <laughs> It's like the prodigal son. Look what he did. Uh, and my friend, that, the testimony of Naomi and the testimony of us. You know, when people stand up around here and testify, uh, Brother Doug, of what mess they made out of their life and what decisions they made out of their life, and they done this and they done that and they rebelled on God and they got out of church and they rebelled on the parents. That ought to be a testimony to you and a warning to you that if you go that direction, you're going to end up in trouble uh, and the same troubles uh, is going to come in your heart, in your life, just because you didn't heed the warning. Amen. It's got kind of like warning on medicine bottles. We think that's for everybody else but us. Amen. Well, that don't, that don't pertain to me. I won't get that, you know. Come on now. They didn't put them on there for nothing. Amen. It's just like smoking cigarettes. It tells on there on the pack. They warn you, and you just keep a puffing them, you know, and then you get cancer and whine and cry while they get that because you didn't heed the warning, and you got in trouble. Amen. Come on now. Oh, you smokers say amen right there, okay? Anyway, uh, uh, my friend, listen, you ignore the warning and you'll get in trouble. <laughs> then I thought about, second of all, when, 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 we, when we imagine that man's wisdom and advice is always true. He said, what are you talking about? Look at verse 11. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master. The owner of the ship, more than those things that were spoken of Paul. And because the haven uh, was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised uh, to depart this also. You know what they did? They didn't listen to man, the man of God. They didn't listen to the parents, uh, but they listened to man's wisdom, uh, and it got them in trouble. Sometimes, my friend, listen to, listen to the majority. <laughs> See, the majority on that ship said, oh, it's okay, let's sail. Well, I'm going to tell you, the majority ain't always right. Amen. Just because it's the majority, it don't mean it's, everything's okay. Sometimes the majority is wrong. We've seen that the last election. It was wrong. Amen. And sometimes everybody say, well, there's more for it. Don't matter. Everybody's doing it. It don't matter. The man of God spoke, and they turned from the man of God and listened to the crowd. Amen. The Bible said they relied on the owner of the ship. He looked at him and said, well, he's been selling for years and he's got to have wisdom and he's probably made all these voyages over and over and over. He knows what he's doing and we're just going to trust him. Amen. You know, some people's like that. They want to turn from God. They want to turn, my friend, the Holy Ghost and they want to go the devil's way and say, you know, he's done a pretty good job so far. And my friend, they follow the devil instead of following God. They follow, my friend, away contrary from the word, contrary from the spirit and they take man's wisdom and man's advice and my friend, they listen to what man's got to say instead of what God's got to say. I'm not saying that they, wisdom can't come from men. I ain't saying wisdom can't come from a lady. I say saying wisdom can't come from parents. But I'm going to tell you what, my friend, I don't care how much wisdom you get. If you don't line up with this book, my friend, you're going to be in trouble and you'll end up in trouble if it don't line up. There's a lot of people that's in this world that's telling you directions and it's contrary to the Word of God. Right. Amen. Right. You don't believe it. Listen to all these abortionists in this gay movement crowd. They tell you everything's okay and all right. Boy, we, we, you know, we, they, we've studied all this and everything's okay. If you follow that right, guess what? You're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so man's wisdom will get you in trouble. You know, they say, well, nothing wrong. You ever had people say, well, there's nothing really wrong with it? 
Amen. Nothing, nothing wrong with it. Nothing doing it. Nothing, nothing, nothing trying it out. <laughs> Come on now, help me out. You know, you know, if you, you, I wish I could say everything I want that's going through my brain, but but you know, it's like it's like somebody said, "Well, hey, oh, I heard you try it one time." Oh, how many times when I was in the military? You fellas in the military, you probably say amen right here. How many times we seen a new guy come in, new soldier come in, never drunk or drank a liquor in his life, never smoked a cigarette in his life, never had any dope in his life, and he come in and the pressure just gets on him. Everybody's, everybody's doing it. Oh, come on, you know. And they try one time, one time. And guess what? It leads to the next, and it leads to the next. And, and guess what? He's the one laying on the floor, my friend puking himself and laying his own vomit because he let one, he let man tell him it's okay. Nothing's wrong with it. Just do it anyway. Yeah. And guess what? He got in trouble. I believe it's all my heart. I believe the product son, brother, brother Doug. I don't believe that's the first time he'd ever been town. Because <laughs> if he hadn't, if he'd been, never been town for, he wouldn't know nothing about all that stuff. But I believe he got down there and maybe some of his buddies said, hey, look at here what we got. All you're doing is working on the farm. All you're doing is up there laboring and slaving for your daddy. You ought to come down here look at all the fun. Look at all these women. And the next thing you know, he stepped out away from home on the device of somebody else. And guess what? He got in trouble. Uh, you better, if you're saved, you better listen to the God. You better listen to the Holy Ghost. Because man will lead you wrong. Some of these boys, that girls, these some of these boys, they'll pet you and tell you you're so sweet and they love you. They don't even know what love is. They're they're they got persimmon love. Amen. And they don't know. They'll do everything just to get to you. And my friend, they'll tell you everything in the world. My friend, I'll tell you what, you better get the Bible and tell where God says, stay pure and keep yourself holy and righteous. And my friend, because if you don't, you'll get in trouble. Get in trouble. Your boys are getting in trouble because you listen to somebody else. And then listen, let me say something. You know, I guess it's tired of people saying, well, it's legal. <laughs> well, just because it's legal don't make it right. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Just because it's legal, <laughs> it don't matter. Come on. <laughs> I was going to Florida a few years ago, and a guy told me, said, they'll let you run five miles on speed limits. Well, I thought he was telling me the truth. I run five miles on the speed limit, pulling me over. The guy pulled up and he said, you're speeding. I said, I just go. It was 70. And I said, go 75. He said, that's what I told you. You're speeding. I said, they said you could go five miles an hour over. He said, who told you that? He said, the law says 70. I just shut up and said, write the ticket. Amen. You know why? Well, you get in trouble Listen to other people. And they got in trouble. If they'd have listened to Paul, they wouldn't have been in trouble. If these men as wisdom had stood and said, hey, listen, let's listen to the man of God. Let's listen to what God said. Don't pay no attention to what I say. Listen to what God said. It never went through the storm. Right. So listen, they had to get in a heap of trouble. No other warning. Imagine man's wisdom is always true. And that's something else. Imagine everything's just wonderful <laughs> in your life. Look at it. Look at it. The Bible says in verse 12, Now when, because the haven was not commodious to, live, to winter in, that meant there wasn't a mall there. That meant there wasn't all the benefits. There wasn't no coffee clubs there, you know, shops and all that stuff. It just, it just didn't have all the good conveniences. There. That's just what it means. I'm not talking away from them things. I'm just saying that's what it means. It just didn't have things that they wanted to do. And the Bible said, in the, the part advised them this, if by, any, if by any means they might obtain to feed us, were there to winter, and was in the haven of Crete. And it goes on, it says in, in verse 13, and when the soft wind blew, so south wind blew softly, supposing they had attained their purpose, they loosed them. You know what? That soft wind meant this. Everything's just calm and cool. Everything's okay. It real, got real quiet at our house the other day. It's about 6 o'clock in the evening. It got real quiet. You could hear a pin drop. I mean, it just got that, you know, silent, silent. And my wife said, uh-oh, storm fixing to bust out. I said, what makes you think that? She said, it's getting right. It always gets real quiet right before the storm. And I mean, don't tell you, it wasn't just a few minutes. I mean, the bottom fell out. Lightning. In fact, it didn't rain first. It didn't lighten first. It rolled thunder first. And I come off the couch. I mean, it's just like, whoa, you know, man, I come up from there. You know what? That quiet, and this is what it is. But they had that little quiet spell. Oh, everything's okay. Everything's running smooth. We've done this. We've tried this. We've got away with it. Nobody knows it. The parents don't know it. Preachers don't know it. Nobody else knows it. We've got away by it. We've got it by with all this stuff. My employer don't know it, and everything's okay. But all of a sudden, 
Just about the time you think everything's okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Just about the time you think, you know, uh, listen, the wind blew soft. They obtained their purpose. Everything's okay. We got that attitude. See, I told you everything would be okay. I told you all that stuff, all that stuff that preachers preaching on. I told you it won't affect us. It will affect you. Huh? I'm just going to tell you, I just to be honest with you, to be honest with you, Brother Doug, when I first started preaching back in the 60s, and I first started preaching, and I preached for a few years and had them boys, if you'd asked me, I'd have told you everything's okay, everything's smooth sailing, everybody else may have trouble, but we ain't going to have no trouble. <laughs> well, little was I wrong. The soft wind quit blowing every once in a while the storms come. My little grave baby's born. I, you could ask me, preacher, what about your grandbabies? I said, man, life, these are perfect. <laughs> I still think they're perfect. They ain't, but I like to think they are. Amen. You say, why ain't they perfect? Because they're kidding to me. And I look at them. I say, man, ain't no way. Ain't no way. But you know what? My friend, I may not live long enough, but somewhere trouble's going to come. Trouble's going to come. It's going to hard. And you know what? It ain't always going to be smooth sailing. Everything ain't going to be okay. My friend, when you think you've got it made, you can sit back and relax. Everything's okay. Watch out. <laughs> trouble is fixing to come. Amen? Then let me say something else. When, when we envision trouble won't come to us. Amen? We envision that trouble. You know, between, between verse 13 and 14, look at it. Verse 13 says, And when the south wind blew softly, supposing they had obtained their purpose, they loosed this and sailed to Christ. They're just laying back on the boat, sailing along, getting some sun, enjoying the trip. In verse 14, the first word says, But. <laughs> Don't you hate them words? Huh? I mean, they're settling along and just between, look at that little gap, just a little bitty gap between verse 13 and 14. But not long after arose, my friend, a great tempest wind. Guess what? That just a little bit, here comes the storm. Here comes between them verses. You know what? Here comes the storm. My friend, here comes opposition. And my friend, listen, we got that verse, you know, I'm just settling along, everything's okay. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Nobody knows that. I ain't paying attention to nobody. I'm doing my own thing. And I'll tell you, I won't get caught. I won't get caught up. But I'll tell you what, I always get caught up somewhere and trouble always comes. They so your sins will find you out. Amen. Listen. Always, when you're expecting, you think you think everything's gonna be okay. Remember my boys when they're small. I probably told you this. When my boys were small, we lived at the old house. They found a, rat, a rabbit's nest. Had three little old rabbits, baby rabbits, in it. And they come in there and had them in their hands. I said, "Go put them back and leave them alone." I said, uh, "Don't bother them. Let them grow up." And I said, "You'll be won't hunt them later." And uh, a couple of days later, they come in and said, "Daddy, somebody, somebody." Got them rabbits. Something got them rabbits. They're dead. They're gone. I said, I told y'all to leave them alone. There's something in there, something in my little brain, Brother Doug thought, man, something ain't right about this. I said, y'all bother them? Y'all bother them? And they said, no, no, we didn't bother them, Daddy. Well, about two weeks later, we was riding up the road, and we was talking about something, and I was, I was getting on uh, uh, with you about something uh, going up the highway uh, to a meeting, and, uh, and I said, you know, you don't you understand? And the little old Kevin, he just a little funny, he spoke up. He said, yeah, just like he killed them rabbits. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> I said, see there, it always comes out. You always get caught up with, Amen. My friend, they thought everything was okay. Trouble ain't going to come to them. My friend, you can cheat and lie and steal and cover everything up, but <laughs> somewhere it's going to catch up with you. Somewhere trouble's going to come. Somewhere, my friend, you're going to make a mistake. Amen? Amen. When you think everything's okay, it ain't going to bother you. What was that verse, Brother Doug? says, he that think he stands, stand take heed lest he fall. When you get to the place you think, man, I've arrived, I'm so spiritual, I ain't going to fall, I ain't going to crumble, I ain't going to make no mistakes, I got it, I know everything, I'm so full of the Spirit, ain't nobody else up here with me, and everything's going to be okay, watch out. Right. You're fixing Amen. to crumble, amen? You're fixing to get in big trouble right. just because you ignored what the man of God said. You ignored the warnings. You think everything's okay. And when you indulge yourself in works against trouble. Yeah. Now look at this. 
Bible talks about here in these verses. He said in verse 14, not long after, there rose a great storm, and when the ship was caught up and could not bear uh, uh, and the wind, we let her drive and run it under a certain island, which is called Claudia. We had much work to come by by the boat, which uh, when they had taken up, they used helps understand the ship, undergird the ship, fearing lest they should fall in a quick stand, and we uh, being exceedingly tossed to and fro, and the next day a light ship, they're doing everything they can to solve this trouble, get out of this trouble. And there ain't a bit of it working. Huh? And you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes you can try everything you can try to get out of trouble. Fly. You ever try to lie to get out of trouble? It just makes it worse. I found out a long time ago when my daddy was alive when I was a kid, it'd be better off to tell the truth than lie and get a double whooping. <laughs> Amen. It, 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 you know, we, we try to lie our way out. We try to work our way out. I mean, you know what we think? If we think we get rid of this, can't you see them boys? I tell you, this probably, if we get rid of this, it'll lighten it. And maybe it'll help us. Or if we'll get rid of this, or we'll change this, or we'll tighten this up. And they're running around trying to change their troubles. And my friend, they're doing nothing about it but getting in worse trouble. Because a lot of the ship, the boy's going to be tossed. And some people are always try, well, I'll get rid of this, my life's straight enough. If I change this, I'll get rid I'll change this, you know. It's like some marriages. We think, well, if I get rid of my wife, everything will be okay. Well, no, you're going to get another one, and it's going to be the same thing. Her feet's going to stink just like a last one. Come on. <laughs> Sometimes they changing stuff ain't always the good thing. Come on now. <laughs> Let's run him off and find another one. We're going to have to wash his clothes too. Amen. Come on now. <laughs> I know this ain't part of preaching, but it's all I got. Amen. <laughs> but listen, we get in trouble. Sometimes, instead of running to God, we try to fix everything ourselves. Amen. Amen. We try to fix everything, change all this, and do all this stuff. And young folks today, boy, I tell you, I, I don't know how it is up here, but our, in our town, Brother Doug, our young folks, they, just, they think just leaving home is the answer. <laughs> I thought that was the answer. I left home one time. Teenage boy, I thought, well, I'll just leave home. I didn't like the rules. Daddy had rules. One of my daddy's his famous rules was, if you're going to hang around your hat around here, you're going to obey the rules. Well, we had to be home at 11 o'clock. I didn't like that, and you don't either. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> had to double date. Come on now. Couldn't do this, couldn't do that. I thought, well, I'll just hang my hat somewhere else. Called one of my buddies and we went up there and rented a little trailer. Back in those days, you could rent a trailer for fifty dollars a week. We went up there and rented us a little trailer. Brother Brian, I got up the next morning and there wasn't no breakfast. And my clothes wasn't ironed. And <laughs> I picked it all up and went home. Knocked on the door. Mother said, "Well, I stand over all my clothes." She said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I didn't have no breakfast, and my clothes ain't on. I got all the work. I'm coming home." She said, "You'll have to stand out there till your daddy comes to the door." Daddy come to the door. He said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm coming home. There's no breakfast up there." He said, "Well, if you can abide by the rules, you're gonna hang your hat here, hang by the rules." I said, "I believe I can abide by the rules." <laughs> you know what? You get in trouble sometimes. It's not what you think it is out there. Amen. Some of you people that know out there, some of you people's lived a more rough life, you ought to share it with some of these young folks sometime and tell them what it is out there. It ain't what you think it's going to be. Right. And you kids that's just graduated and going to college, you think, boy, I'm in college. It ain't going to be what you think it'll be. It ain't high school no more. Right. Amen. There'll be temptations and trials and things you face to get you in trouble. And there'll be people there trying to get you in trouble. Right. Right. And if you think you can handle it, you can't handle it without God. Right. Amen. Amen. Then I thought about if you insist. You know what? Here, here's, here, let me give let me show you this. I, I wrote this down a while ago since I've been here. These people, Brother Doug, they was working trying to t trying to control that big old ship. <laughs> ship a whole lot bigger than they was. They're trying to bring it. I'm gonna tell you, alcohol and dope bigger than you are. Right, right. Huh? Sex is bigger than you are. Yeah. Internet troubles bigger than you are. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Worldliness is bigger than you are. It'll get a hold of you. Right, it's right. bigger than you can't handle it. The Bible said, what is that verse that says, can you take coals in your fire in your hand and not be burned? Right. Talks about picking up a snake. You say, boy, if you get, if you, you can handle snakes, it won't bother you. Ask all them people. They, snake handling come from Newport, Tennessee, where I live. It's where it started. 
And every one of them eventually got bit. Yeah. You handle it long enough, you're going to get bit. Right. You handle sin long enough, you're going to get bit. Hey. Amen? <laughs> Come on, I know this is different, but anyway. You know, insist on having everything your way. In, in that one verse of Scripture, it said they throwed it out. They worked with her. Look in verse 19, the third day we cast out with our own hands. Can't you imagine maybe the shipman said, hey, don't, don't get rid of that. Huh, we, we know what we're doing. We'll do it our way. <laughs> we're living in that generation today. Everybody wants to do it their way. Even church folks, we don't do it our way. Huh? Come on now. If you don't listen, if you don't listen, you know, let, let me just say this. If You know, people's not faithful to church. They think they're going to be okay, but somewhere it's going to catch up with you. Right. Right. Somewhere you're going to get in trouble. Right. Amen? Right. For not being faithful to the house of God. Somewhere right. it's going to catch up with you when you don't give right. And somewhere it's going to catch up with you when you don't live right. right. Some people think all they got to do is live right and dress right in here. Well, you're living epistles, read in all of all men. They're reading you out yonder. Right. They're looking at you out yonder. They're watching you out yonder. You can very easily lose your testimony and get in trouble right. in your life because of what you do out there. Right. Amen. They want to do everything their own way. They think they know how to handle everything. The prodigal son thought he could handle everything, but he ended up in the hog pit. Right. Yeah. Amen. It's aboard McDonald's at our town a few weeks ago, a few months ago now. He come in McDonald's, he looked like he'd been in the hog pit. I'm telling you, it, it was awful. Stunk. Filthy. Had an old uh, a Walmart bag full of stuff. He come in and sat down in, Wal in, in McDonald's. And I got up and went over there and I said, Are you hungry? He said, Yes, sir. I said, Well, come up here. I'll get you something to eat. He got him something to eat, something to drink. I sat down at the table with him. I said, Can I sit down here with you just a few minutes? And he said, Yeah. I said, Well, I, I said, I'm not going to jump on you. I said, I'm a preacher. I'm not going to jump on you. I said, I just want to ask you one question. If you want to answer it, fine. If you don't, I'll leave. He said, what's that? Uh, he called me Rev. He said, what's that, Rev? I said, how'd you get here? At McDonald's, filthy and dirty, carrying a wall about bag with everything you own. He said, it's a long story. I said, I got plenty of time. He said, I tell you, the first step I made, preacher, was I got out of church. He said, the second step I made, I rebelled on my parents. And said, it's been downhill ever since. Said, I've been in trouble ever since. Said, I ain't seen daylight since. He said, I'm sitting right here now because of those two things. You know what happened? He thought he could handle it. Yeah. I'll show him. Right. I'll show Brother Doug. I'll just go on out here. I'll show him. I'll show my parents. I'll show Grandma and Grandpa. I'll show everybody. I'll prove it. Yeah. We'll know it when you're standing at the door trying to get in, stinking, ragged, and broad, and hungry, and tired of trying to get back in the house. Right. Amen. Yep. Come crawling back. I don't want you to get that far. Right. But if you keep going, like I said tonight, guess what? You're going to get in a heap of trouble. Right. Right. Hmm? Well, second little thought, and I'm through. How to stay out of a heap of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to give the negative without the positive. Right. I, thought, I wrote this down last night. First of all, don't lose hope in your salvation. <laughs> I didn't see this till later on last night, Brother Doug. It says, And when they neither, uh, in verse 20, And when neither sun nor stars in the many days appeared and seemed like all hope they should, uh, that they should be saved was taken away. Boy, aren't you glad to thank God if you're saved, you still got a little hope. You may get out of fellowship with the Lord, but you got a little hope because God won't deny His own. God's still with you and God's there to help you and your salvation's real, it's everlasting and you can put your hope and trust in it. And now let me just say this, it don't matter who you are or what you've done, I don't care how dig and deep you, a ditch you're in, how filthy you are, thank God salvation is still available for whosoever will. I don't care what kind of trouble you're in, salvation can reach lower than you've ever reached. There's still hope in salvation. Don't give hope, don't give hope up hope. Oh, those out there. Don't give up hope for those children, grandchildren, right. friends that you've got. Right. Looks like it's all over with. As long as they're breathing, there's hope. Yeah. As long as they're breathing, Jesus can still save them right. to turn to Christ. Yeah. Yeah. You can still be saved, still be rescued. I know that for a fact because I've seen it happen yeah. the last couple of years of our lives, rescuing. Yeah. And I thought about it. Know that the Lord's on your side. 
Look at verse 21. But after a long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened to me and not lose some creek and to have gained this harm and this loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer for thou shalt be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship for thou stood by me this night the angel of God whose I am and whose I serve Paul said hey don't worry don't worry about it listen listen God is still on our side God's still here we didn't he hey y'all didn't know it but when I got on the boat and y'all got on the boat God got on the boat <laughs> God got on the ship I'm going to tell you I don't care what trouble you're in He's there. I like that song. <laughs> you can go over the bottom. Guess what? There's Jesus. <laughs> He's everywhere. Amen. He's there. I've heard people talk about getting down in the, the, the mire and get down as low as you could go. Nobody had nothing to do with him. And Jesus would come. Holy Ghost would come. They'd remember. I remember old boy in prison one time. He, he got saved. He told a testimony. He said... He said, Brother Mike, they put me in a in a, a cell by myself. Said I was in uh, whatever that word is, you know, nobody else. And can't see them, let them out of our day. I know what it is, I can't think of it. But anyway, he said, I sat right in there. He said, I didn't have, they wouldn't let me have no visitors. He said, the only time I seen anybody, they came and let me out of hour for a day to walk around and went back in. Didn't see nobody till the next day. And I had one hour a day. But he said, Brother Mike, you know what happened? I said, what happened? He said, I sat in that cell one day and said, I got to thinking about the old man of God that preached when I was a kid. And said, I got to thinking about some of them verses he quoted and some of them messy preached. And said, just like it came back to me. And said, next thing I know, the Holy Ghost of God began to deal with my heart and convict me. And he said, I got down in that old cell and got saved and got born again by the grace of God. I don't care how deep you get or how my friend blocked off you are. He's there. He's there. You can count on it. He's in the midst of your trouble. He's always right there to help you. <laughs> Amen. Then my friend, know that the Lord's will will be done. <laughs> Verse 24, Paul said, Fear not. He said, The voice God said, Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all that sail with thee. Well, ain't it good to know that the will of God's going to be done? Amen. 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 The will of God's going to be done in your heart and in your life. You know, what kind of trouble you got? God's God. If God said it, I've seen people. I've seen people, brother Doug, got a promise. I mean, I'm thinking about one lady. One lady years ago down in, in North Carolina. Uh, she came daughter, and I've, I've told you this many times. But she came daughter every service, every seven morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, revival, come revival every night. And you know what she'd say? She said, "God told me He's going to save my boy." For years, for years, I'd preach a meeting. She'd come to that order. Pastor said every service, no matter who preached, every service they had, she'd come to that order and stand up and testify. Pray my boy. God's going to save him. God's going to save him. And that preacher, I asked the preacher one time, I said, what's the problem? What's it, boy? She, he said, boy, he's in so much deep to sin. said, he's out of his mind. He's doped and drank, lived a wicked life. He's, in, in, in essence, what he was saying is, I kind of feel sorry for her. But you know what? She never lost hope. She kept praying. She'd stand every service and testify, pray for my boy. Wasn't nothing else. But when the pastor said, anybody got anything to say? She said, don't forget to pray for my boy this week. God's going to save him. And boy, years later, years later, it's over in a meeting. And I was preaching. And it's on Wednesday night. And most of the time, you preach to the church on Wednesday night. And boy, God kept telling me, preach to the lost, preach to the lost, preach to the lost. And I asked the pastor, I said, Pastor, is anybody here lost tonight? And he said, as far as I know, everybody here is saved. This is our church. And I, and I said, God, do you hear that? <laughs> hey, you know what I mean, boy, I, and God kept on. I preached to the Lord and had doors kind of like y'all set the windows going that way. And Brother Doug, why was I preaching? I kept seeing something come up like that. And I'd see something come up and look in the window like that. It got so bad, I started to tell somebody to go back there. And God just seemed like, don't say nothing. And I kept preaching and preaching. And when I gave the invitation, the door come open. Here come an old boy down through there. I mean, ragged. You girls think you got holes in your britches he didn't hardly have no britches on and here he come down that aisle and my friend when he passed that mama she come out of there shouting running around the building I told you my boys are coming I told you he's a coming and he got down and got born again hey don't lose hope there's help in the trouble God's there promises there God's wills there your prayers is there don't give up there's help in trouble still help in trouble Still there. Be patient and let God work it out. Look in verses number 26. He says, How be it we must be cast upon a certain island? 
In other words, he said it ain't going to happen right now, but it's going to happen. <laughs> I don't know about you, sometimes I, 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 I want to try to make it happen. Uh, come on now, you ever, ever done that? I'm going to make them get right. <laughs> I'm going to push them till they get right. Well, sometimes you know what you're going to do, you're going to push them out the door. Amen? You're going to push them out. Just patiently wait on God to work and deal with their heart and speak to their heart and speak to their soul. I got a boy that don't go to church. I don't know the last time Brother Dougie's been to church. I sent him texts. Not every day, but all along I sent him little texts. Work for you, love you. Sometimes I get somebody's phone that he don't know, send him texts. <laughs> so he won't know it's me. I sent him one while back with another preacher friend, and my phone went bing. I looked at it, and he said, Daddy, I know that you. <laughs> he said, I know what you're doing. I told me last week, but look, he said, Daddy, don't give up. Keep sending them. His wife looked at his phone the other day. She called me. She said, all them texts you sent, he ain't erased them. He's got every one of them. <laughs> Y'all be a big rumble one of these days come from down south. You know, that old boy got in. I don't want to push him. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what, you just got to patiently wait, let God work, deal with his heart. You know, it, it just, just, it just, just, uh, follow God and guess what complete victory will come guess what the Bible said they landed on shore all of them <laughs> they lost that ship that stood in trouble with but they all their life was saved and sometimes you know what you're going to lose that trouble but God's going to save your life yeah. amen. amen listen we all have trouble Job had trouble he got in them he got out of them yeah. Naomi got in trouble she got out of it. She got even got put in the lens of Christ. <laughs> Jonah got in trouble, but he got out. You know why he got out? He said, salvation's of the Lord. <laughs> Chronicle got in trouble, and he got out. Hebrew boys got in trouble, they got out. Daniel got in trouble, and they got out. You know why? Every one of them turned to God. You go on sometimes, you'll get in a heap of trouble. And I'm going to tell you, young folks, it ain't worth it. The devil will plant it in your mind, you'll be better off. You'll be better off without them godly parents. You'll be better off without this or without that. You'll be better off with this, with that. I'll tell you what, I, I quote this Trust the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding, all thy ways, and not him, and he'll direct you. I don't know why I preached this. Never preached it in my life. Just sit down the other night at midnight. And Brother Doug asked me to preach. This is all I had. God may be sending a warning. You never know. God may just have one little warning for somebody. You're thinking of going a different direction. Thinking of trying this, trying that. Giving up your marriage. Giving up your family. Giving up your testimony. Going to another church. Going a different direction. Getting out of church. I'm going to tell you what. If you don't make the right decisions, you're going to get in a heap of trouble. You better, you better go right here. You get your answer. Get your directions. And can I say this? But Doug, if I don't say this right, you tell me. Sometimes you can't even believe some of these preachers. You better back them up with a book. All of them, I got as much confidence in Brother Doug, but I know he's human, but I still got as much confidence in him as I guess anybody I know. Huh? Somebody asked me, they said, why do you go to church in Kentucky? I said, because I know the pastor all his life. I said, I know him when he was single. I know him when he was married. I know him when he had a house full of young'uns. And I know him now. And I got confidence that he's going to preach that Bible. I can't say that everywhere. I can't say that everywhere. I tell you, we better listen to the man of God. You better listen to your teachers. You better listen to your parents. And parents, you better give godly advice. 
I'll give you this, and I'm through. We had a we had a girl in our church. When I was pastor, we had a girl in our church. She was a cheerleader. She didn't want to be a cheerleader, but her mama wanted to be a cheerleader. And she'd tell me, cry, tears running down the face. I don't even want to cheer. But mama. There's a lot of these kids don't want, ain't nothing wrong with sports, but a lot of them don't want to play. It's called daddy never to get to play, and he wants to make sure his boy plays. Or his daughter plays. Their heart ain't even it. Some of them's hearts ain't it, and ain't nothing wrong with it. Some of them do good, get scholarships, I understand. But she didn't want to play. She didn't want to cheer. She pushed her, pushed her, sent her to summer camps. Couldn't even enjoy her summer. I told her mama one day, I said, she don't want to cheer. She said, I didn't know your business. I said, well, I'm her pastor. And she talked to me. That part's my business. And you can do what you want to. It'll be fine, preacher. Before she got through cheerleading, she's pregnant. She pushed her and pushed her and pushed her. She was drinking, hoping, and pregnant. She sat in my office, eyes black, Poor friend beat her, punched her right in the nose. Sitting there pregnant, looked awful. She said, Preacher, I got tired of cheering because my mom wanted to cheer, and I just had to find something else. So I turned to dope and sex. You know what she happened? She got in trouble. She got in trouble because her mama made her own decision. You better not listen to everybody. You better listen to God. Amen. Come on now. Now, don't take me wrong what I'm fixing to say. There's nothing wrong with encouraging your kids to do that. There's nothing wrong. But I'm going to tell you what, you better let, God's got a purpose for every one of these. And you better let God find them, find the purpose that God wants them to be. Amen? Nothing wrong with all that other, but that, you know, it's like I, like I tell them, I said sometimes, and, 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 and I'm not against ball, please don't, my boys played ball and everything, but I'm going to tell you what, after you push and push and push, i got a granddaughter, they're pushing, 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 pushing her to play ball, and I told her, I said, I said Riley, in two years, it's over. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do in two years? You can't cook. You don't know how to wash clothes. Your room looks like a dump. You don't know how to clean house. All you got to know is all you know how to do is shoot a ball. I said, what are you going to do? She got a little boyfriend. She said, I think we're going to get married right out of school. And I said, well, he ain't going to stay with you because he's going to get hungry. And he don't want to wear dirty clothes. I said, you're going to be in a heap of trouble. Don't laugh at me. You're going to be in a heap of trouble when you're married because you don't know how to do nothing. Huh? And sometimes all we know to do is have fun. I'm trying to quit. But Doug, I think some churches, these churches, you know, it's booming and having all that. You just wait down the road and Jesus don't come. Some of them are going to blow up, have the biggest trouble you've ever seen because all they're doing is having fun. Everything's earthly. Everything fun. Everything flesh. Clung like you are. Run around half naked. We don't care just so we got the crowd. And they're blowing money, blowing money to having fun that they could support missionaries and win souls to Christ. And one of these days, it's going to blow up on them. You can't entertain the flesh and keep on and keep on. It'll blow up. Amen. Trouble's going to come. Everybody's a flocking in that crowd right now. But you get marked my word. I've done seen it happen too many times. Some big old thing, everybody takes off on it, and then it blows up. <laughs> Trouble comes. You know why? It's flesh. You better stay with this book. You better raise your kids with this book. You better make your decisions with this book. And you better make sure the Holy Ghost is leading you. Because if you make the wrong decisions like Paul and him did on that ship, like they did, heap of trouble. Amen. I don't know why I preach this, but Doug, I'm through. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.